Helen? Uh, Helen, stop! Helen! Stop it, Helen. Why she stick her fingers in my mouth? Cause she bad you talking all day when she can't hear nothing. If she can't hear, then how she no talk coming out of my mouth? I think she trying to talk. Now she going crazy eating herself. Stop that. Helen, stop it. <laughs> Helen, Helen, stop it. Oh, help! 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 Helen, Help! 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 Stop it. Stop it. Okay, okay, give Help! the scissors. Helen. <laughs> Helen, give mother the scissors. Helen. Okay. Okay. There now. Okay. It's my pretty girl, huh? Well, Father, I hope you got your story ready. What story is that? One you're gonna tell when the little savage kills somebody. Your Honor. I had no idea that poor, deaf, and dumb child could be so violent. Your sister is none of your concern, James. Uh, don't you have some occasion you need to dress for? Why don't I ever meet any of your young friends, James? Why can I invite people here? But surely your friends don't think that Helen is any reflection on you. Well, Helen is the real head of this house. She's probably just pretending she can't speak or hear, so she don't have to answer to anyone. Your jealousy of that helpless child is intolerable. Auntie. Oh, well, here we are. Here's her father and Aunt Helen. <laughs> I saw James. I hoped to you went quarreling again. No, no. Oh, Katie, we all love Helen. But surely you must see what an effect she is having on your household. Mm. Mm. Why, James and Arthur can barely speak a civil word. And all your time is given over to the girl. You hardly ever have time for your new baby. James is right. You and Arthur must do something oh. and soon. What can we do, Evelyn? The only thing left to do is to take Helen to an asylum. And Kate would never stand for it. Well, have you tried? We have taken her to every hospital in two states. No one holds out any hope. What about that Dr. Chisholm up in Baltimore? I read an article in your very own newspaper, Arthur. They say he has cured many cases of blindness that other doctors have given up on. Now, why not write to him? And have Kate's heart broken again? I'm prepared for my heart to break any number of times, Captain. I'll write to him myself, if you like, Katie. There isn't going to be any cure. And the sooner we accept that fact, the better off we'll all be. I will never accept it, Captain. I can't. I'm going to the printers. Mm -hmm. And now, look, Helen. I can't turn my back for a moment. Arthur, Helen knows a lot more than you think about what goes on in this house. Nothing is solved by running all over the country every time some quack doctor gets his name mm. in the papers. Nothing is solved by running to the office either. Mm. 
kid, darling. What can anyone do? The kindest thing we could do would be to find a sanitarium in a beautiful spot where she no. would be taken care of. No, never. Oh, she tore off my buttons. Oh. It's eyes. She wants the doll. She wants the doll to have eyes. I'm sorry, Evelyn. Just tell me what it'll cost to have the buttons replaced tonight. I know she does. Oh, don't mind about that. What are a couple of buttons if it makes Helen happy? I'll sew them on if you like. Is that what you're trying to do? Make Helen happy? Nothing makes her happy. Everything you give only makes her worse. <gasps> she can have these little things that make her happy. Oh, Helen! The Helen! Please. You cannot do things like that, okay? Why? She can have the little things that make her happy. If you won't send her away, it's okay. then we must find some way of confining her. Oh, you want to lock her away in the attic like some sort of mad woman? She wants to talk. <laughs> Right. I'll write to Dr. Chisholm. I know. Dr. Chisholm could do nothing for the girl and refer them to Dr. Alexander Graham Bell. As the girl is young and the parents are not willing to send her to us, I have put you up for the role of governess. Governess? Or nursemaid? We both knew you'd get rid of me one of these days. You've accomplished so much here. But when you first came to us, you couldn't even spell your name. Are your eyes still so painful? No, it's my ears, sir. Tell me about the child. Is she bright or dull? Can she be taught? She's given to tantrums, they say. So am I. Maybe you should warn the Kellers about me. I have told them nothing of your history except your qualifications for the job. Here is the money for your train ticket. And here is a gift from all of us with our love. We're going to miss you. This is my last chance to counsel you, Annie. You lack tact and the talent to bend to others. You're hard to fool and harder to please. But all the same, we are proud of you. We'll walk to meet the train again. Well, I hope the girl is on this one. Oh, she will be. Oh, well, we'll see you at supper then. Your mother's not here, child. I'm here, though. I'm your father. I'm your father. I used to swing you through the air. You weren't even two years of age yet. I wonder if you remember any of that. Or any of us. Here you are. There's a piece of candy for you. Don't you miss it? Captain Keller wouldn't like this if he saw it, but what's one little candy gonna hurt? What's your name, sir? Ma'am. Don't worry about it, sir. Miss Sullivan? Yes. I'm James Keller. 
I had a brother, Jimmy. Are you Helen's? Half brother. Do you have a trunk? Yes. Henry, Percy. Come on, Percy. Miss Sullivan. Miss Sullivan. I'm so relieved. We were beginning to get a little bit worried about you. The man who sold me that ticket ought to be tied to the tracks. I'm uh, Catherine Keller. I'm Helen's mother. You didn't bring Helen. I was hoping you would. Well, her father wanted to spend the afternoon with her, actually. They so enjoy their time together. <laughs> Kate, you should be ashamed. Miss Sullivan, you'll find it in the South we make up these little stories just to amuse each other. I hope you won't mind. How much can a blind and deaf child learn, Miss Sullivan? I don't know. Does she communicate with you at all? Oh, well, I always know what she wants, if that's what you mean. No, you don't. All anybody knows is that if you give Helen a piece of candy, she'll be quiet for a while. Can you teach her to sit still, Miss Sullivan? I'd have to teach her language first. Language? If she doesn't know words, how could she know why you want her to sit still? Miss Sullivan, perhaps you were misled as to Helen's condition. She can neither see nor hear. But if it is her senses that are impaired and not her mind, she must have language. Language is more important to the mind than light is to the eye. But how will you teach her if you can't talk to her? Anyway, I can. We are going to do everything that we can to help you. I don't want you to think of us as strangers, Miss Annie. Oh, strangers aren't so strange to me. I've been around them all my life. Welcome to Ivy Green, Miss Sullivan. I trust you had a good journey. I had several, thank you. Where's Helen? Oh, Miss Annie? We've put you in the upstairs corner room. Now, if there's any breeze at all this summer, you're going to feel it. I'll, I'll take my suitcase, thanks. Well, I have it, Miss Sullivan. No, please, let me. I wouldn't think of it. I have something in it for Helen. I needn't be treated like a guest. Now, when may I see Helen? Well, there she is. That's Helen. She seems very rough, Kate. Why didn't she take her glasses off? Well, the Institute said that the light hurts her eyes. <laughs> Apparently, she was nearly blind as a child. Blind? Well, she's had nine operations on her eyes. And they expect one blind person to teach another one? How long was she employed at that school? Oh, well, she, she wasn't employed there. She was one of their best students. Students? Now you have two blind girls to take care of, Father. You stay out of this. James, why do you have to be so mean about Helen? Why, to confirm my father's view of me, of course. Those are mine.
Yes, yes. All right then, Helen. Doll will be your first word. It's as good as any. D. O. L. L. Doll. Doll. It has a name. D. O. L. Thank you, Henry. Thank you, Puss. So what was that? Some sort of game? It's an alphabet for the deaf. Each letter has a sign. D, O, L, L. Doll. First, she will learn to imitate. D, O, <gasps> Oh, she can imitate things, all right. Like a regular little monkey. A bright little monkey. T. I think she wants her doll back. She can have it back when she spells it. She has no idea what o. words even are. How can she spell them? If her fingers learn the letters now, then maybe someday her brain will learn that they have a meaning. Did you make up this alphabet? Me? No. Spanish monks under a vow of silence. Which, Mr. James, I wish you would take. C A K E Cake C A K E Very good. Cake. D O L L D O L L Very good, Helen. Very good. Good first lesson. Very well done. Very well done. Oh! Oh! Ellen, <laughs> let me out, you <laughs> wicked girl! Just one in this house. Where's Miss Annie? She's in her room. Didn't anyone call her to supper? James, go upstairs and bring her down. Certainly. I'll get the ladder. What? I'll need a ladder. It won't take long. What are you talking about? Well, Helen locked her in her room and ran off with the key. And I suppose you were going to sit there and say nothing. You told me it was none of my business, Father. I was just trying to respect your wishes. Miss Sullivan, are you in there? Yes, sir, I'm in here. Isn't there a key on your side? 
No, sir, there's no key, sir. Put that ladder away, Jimmy. Whatever you say, Father. Captain, we can't keep Miss Annie locked up till we find the key. James! Bring the ladder back. Whatever you say, Father. I had her to solve problems, not create them. Put it, Jimmy. Thank you, Percy. Miss Sullivan! Yes, Captain Keller? I hope this is not a sample of what we can expect of you. Come out and sit on my shoulder. I'm perfectly capable of going down a ladder by myself. Do as I say, Miss Sullivan. chivalrous of you. Oh, this is not chivalry. This is practicality. You're no good to us trapped in a room. <laughs> not in the house ten minutes. Honestly, I don't see how you managed it. I'll look for the key, sir. Thank you. Just don't look in any rooms that can be locked. All right, everyone. Excitement's over. I better leave the L-A-D-D-E-R. you can get rid of me that easily. You're wrong. I have nothing better to do and nowhere else to go. To the best of my knowledge, no one in this house has ever tried to control the girl. But how can I discipline her without breaking her spirit? But if she won't obey me. Oh. oh! Ink. It has a name. Pen. Pen. No, Helen. No, Helen. <clears throat> the captain thinks that you're spelling everything that Helen does is like spelling to a fence post. You talk to the baby, don't you? Does she understand what you mean? Not yet, but she will someday if she hears enough words. I'm letting Helen hear the words. How long will it take? A million words, maybe. Hen.
Did you see that? I spelled pen. She spelled cake. She wants to see if I can tell the difference. There is nothing impaired in that head, Mrs. Keller. Helen is smart and angry. I can use that. Can you teach me those letters? I'll start tomorrow. If both of us are spelling to her, that makes only about half a million words each. <gasps> oh, um, Helen! Helen! Why did she get a reward for stabbing me? I, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm sorry. Miss Sullivan, breakfast is ready. Shall I get the ladder? That's enough, Jimmy. Uh, oh, good morning, Miss Annie. Morning. Good morning. Uh, morning. I hope you've settled in comfortably, Miss Sullivan. Thank you, Captain. I have. Please help yourself. Miss Annie, if there is ever anything that you need, please let us know. Um. Tobacco price is up, Father. We should earn a nice profit this year for a change. Used to be a man who'd make a good living running a farm. Well, perhaps if you'd leave your pet newspaper and come show me my business, we could make some real money. Not in front of Miss Sullivan. Why not in front of Miss Sullivan? Miss Annie, uh, Helen is used to helping herself from our plates. I'm afraid I'm not used to it. No, of course not. Oh! Viney, please bring Miss Sullivan another plate. There's nothing wrong with my plate, Captain, only that Helen's hands don't belong in it. Well, one plate is hardly worth spoiling our breakfast over. You see, she's just going to keep trying until she gets away. I must insist that you let the girl go. Thank you. Oh! Oh, look, now she's hurt herself. No, she hasn't. I know a tantrum when I see one. And a badly spoiled child. Oh, Miss Sullivan. Please show some pity. For this kind of behavior. Pity's the one thing she doesn't do. The whole house waits on her hand and foot. Here, yeah, here. Yeah. You stay out of this. Letting Helen have her own way, it's really such a small thing. Small? It seems you've all decided it's easier to feel sorry for Helen than to... Teach her how to behave. Well, I've not seen that you've taught her anything yet, Miss Sullivan. Quite right, Captain. Well observed. I'll start right now if you leave the room. Leave the room? Yes, please, Captain. Right now, if you leave the room. Miss Sullivan, if you're not willing to stand up to one tantrum, I cannot teach her anything. <laughs> Mrs. Kemp, you asked if there was anything I needed. Yes, but I... I need to be alone with Helen. Right now. Miss Sullivan? Oh, Captain. It... James? Captain, may I speak with you outside? Give us a moment, please. This is absurd. Oh, Arthur, I am sure that she is only trying to do what is best. I will not have my house turned into a circus. <coughs> Unless there is a change in attitude, Miss Sullivan is dismissed. Well, Arthur, and, and then what hope do we have for Helen? No less than we had before. And then perhaps we can regain some quiet.
What you want me to do, Miss Kate? It's noontime and the breakfast dishes ain't been cleared. Hush, man. from her own plate, with a spoon, all by herself. And she folded her napkin. The room's a wreck, but she folded her napkin. I'll be in my room, Mrs. Keller. Miss Annie, lunch gonna be ready right away. What are you reading? Dr. Howe's account of his patient, Laura Bridgman. She was deaf, blind, and mute from the age of two. Did he succeed with her? He did. It is possible. With patience, I suppose. Something they did not give me a certificate for at Perkins. After this morning's lesson, the captain wants me to dismiss you, but I am going to insist that you remain. Thank you. Where is your family, Miss Annie? My brother Jimmy was the last I had. He died 12 years ago. I'm sorry, I... I tried to protect him. I failed. It's no use trying to protect or speak for other people. Not really. The only hope is to teach them to do it for themselves. That's what I'm trying to do with Helen. What you demand of her now is all she'll ever be. Step. <sighs> Captain. And if what happened this morning wasn't enough, Helen can't stand to be near her. Things have gotten worse, and I want you to give her notice. No. Well, if you won't, I must. Good evening, Captain. Mrs. Keller. Oh. Miss Sullivan, I find that I am not satisfied with this. That is, this arrangement. Uh, Will you please take off your glasses? I find it very difficult to speak to you with them on. Of course. Uh, if you must, keep them on. Now, Miss Sullivan... Please tell me, Captain, is the little house in the grove of trees being used for anything? The garden house? This is just what I am talking about. Miss Sullivan, if you expect to stay on here, there must be a change in your manner. And you must convince me that there's the slightest hope of teaching a child who flees from you like the plague. You could show some sympathy. You're absolutely right, Captain. 
There is not the slightest possibility of teaching a child who runs away from me. It is hopeless here. And the sooner we realize that, the sooner we can get to a solution. It is not hopeless. Helen could talk by the time she was 10 months old. Before this illness, she was such a good child. Yes, she was an extraordinary child. I believe that. But she's not that child anymore. I've seen pets behave better than she does, and it's your pity that's the cause of it. I beg your pardon. I'm afraid your love for Helen is a greater handicap to her than her blindness or her deafness. Annie, before you came, we spoke of putting Helen in an asylum. Please don't give up. Obviously, Miss Sullivan thinks it's hopeless. Here! It's hopeless here! I'm only just beginning. Please let me show you. Please follow me. I believe I can only make progress with Helen if I have complete charge of her. But you already have that. No, I mean day and night. She must depend on me. For what? For everything. Her food, her clothes, her playtime, her sweets. All of these things are tools that I can use to reach her. And how do you propose to do that when she runs away from you? If she can run to you, I have no hope. Which is why I must live with her somewhere else. You can bring Helen here after a long carriage ride. She won't know where she is. And you can still see her every day, provided she does not know you're here. How long would you keep her? As long as it takes. I know this is the way. And Captain, I cannot be rude to you if you're not around to interfere with me. Am I to understand that if I say no to this, you will abandon your charge to an asylum. An asylum is no place for Helen, Captain. Believe me, I know. I grew up in an asylum. In the state poorhouse, my brother and I, until it took his life. Our playroom was the dead house where they kept the bodies until they could dig the graves. It made me strong. But Helen is strong enough already. Please give me this chance. Give her this chance to save herself. Miss Sullivan, do you like this child? Do you? Captain, with your permission, I'll give you two weeks. You have two weeks to get the child to tolerate you. Percy could stay here. He could run errands for you. Two weeks is not enough. Two weeks is what I am offering. I'll take it. Where would you like your suitcase, Miss Sullivan? Oh, anywhere is fine. How do you expect a winter over in this place? You plan to tie it to the chair? How is it you have no pity for Hella? To have pity for someone is a waste of energy. Feeling sorry for ourselves is even worse. Well, I hope you win, Miss Solo. Oh, 
Denver, we rode in the country for two hours. For all she knows, she could be in another town. Bring her inside, please. Oh, she wants me. She can have you back in two weeks. Miss Annie, please take good care of her. I will. Let me go. She, she gonna pinch me. I think she's trying to talk. She can talk, but she's got to use her hands. Here, let me show you. She's mad at me now, so she doesn't want to play, but she knows a lot of letters. C. A. K. Cake. C. A. K. E. She spells cake, she gets cake. She doesn't know what the word means yet, but she will. We don't need her. How would you like to learn one she doesn't know? M is easy. I is even easier. Just the pinky up. L. K. M. Why should I talk to you? I'm teaching Percy. 
M I L K. No, I'm teaching Percy. Oh, you're jealous. At least I'm back to where I can touch you. You can go back to bed, Percy. Thank you. I never thought that life could be so quiet. I miss her too. Hush, little baby, don't say a word. It's gonna buy you the mockingbird. Don't sing. Mama's gonna buy you a diamond ring. Annie, I can't sleep, Annie. There are rats in my room. Can't we live somewhere else? We don't have anywhere else, Jimmy. Please, can I sleep with you? Just for tonight. so hard to understand. We were just about to have lunch. How is she, Miss Annie? Fine. I told her that stitch yesterday. Now I can't get her to stop. <sighs> it's so quiet in the house without her. Well, when the captain and James on Bickering, that is. Uh, I notice they don't get along. Oh, well, they used to when James's mother was alive. Mm. But then Helen came along and, well, she takes up so much of our attention. Oh, 
such a lady. She'd rather starve than eat without a spoon. You have taught her so much in a week and a half. It's not enough. Obedience is not enough. She knows so many words. If only she knew what they meant. And how will she learn? The way a bird learns to use its wings, it has to come. But how, Miss Annie? I need more time. Alone with her? Yes. Why not? Because I can't. It... Spell it. If she ever learns, you're the first person she's going to want to talk to. She needs me. She needs me, too. No. You have three days, Annie. That's all you have. I believe we're on something here. Bob? Hello, Francis. James? Yep. Thought I'd come take a look around. Well, we had an idea last year and tried something. And it looks like 22 inches between the plants gives us about twice the yield. But, uh, twice the yield? We had that blue mold pretty bad last year, sir. Well, we think it's carrying over the winter and the roots. So we're going to try to get all the roots and stalks out of the ground after the harvest. Well, with the roots gone, if we get a bad rain, we stand to lose a whole layer of topsoil. Well, I was thinking of that, too. Let's plant some low grass for the winter. Look for some, would you, Francis? Mm -hmm. Did you need something, Father? I think I have it, Jimmy. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Of course. I have waited for this day. I only hope we won't be disappointed. Helen doesn't ever disappoint you, Father. Why are you jealous, James? I'm not jealous. 
I mean, Vius. It's not only Helen who needs to learn how to talk. Things will be very different here if Helen is better. I know. Who will I blame then for my unhappiness? If only there was someone to help me. I feel I need a teacher as much as Helen does. Miss Sullivan, I've brought Helen a playmate. It's a kind of graduation present. Please, wait outside, Captain. Well, Miss Sullivan, two weeks are up. Not until five o'clock. Oh, what difference can half a day make? You don't know how eager we are to have her back. I do know. It's my main concern. Well, you've done wonders for her. And you've done us a great service. I've actually missed her. I owe that debt to you. Pay it to Helen, Captain. Give her another week. Well, look what you've done for her already. She's well-behaved, she seems quite contented, and certainly cleaner. She's cleaner? Is that what you care about? She's learning to talk, Captain. The words are in her fingers already. I can't risk her unlearning it when she goes back to her old life in the house. Oh, look. What is she spelling? Water. <laughs> Miss Sullivan? That dog doesn't know what words are any more than she does. The dog's happy enough, though. God may not have meant for Helen to speak, Miss Sullivan. I mean her too, Captain. Give her half a week. You have until five o'clock. Kate cannot bear to be separated from her for another night. Your Miss Sullivan insisted on keeping her till five o'clock. No, not water. Dog. Dog. This, this is water. Satisfied. Give them back their child and their dog. Both housebroken. Everyone's satisfied. Everyone but me and you. Reach! Reach! to give you, Helen. Everything in the earth, everything that we are, what we dream of, what we leave behind, what we think and feel and know and share, it's all in words. Oh, if I could give you one word. One word I could give you everything. Ooh. 
wool. It means this. <sighs> Chair. Bring her home. Mm. Huh? Let's put your things away. That's right. Put your things away. Oh. How is she? Please, please give me more time. I can't. Helen? I want an epidemic on my hands. Yeah. No, you can't Jimmy. go! Jimmy! No. Jimmy! We're doing the best we can. So no, I'll come and get you when I can. Jimmy! May I escort you? I'm not very good company right now. Well, I didn't come to keep you company. 
I came to keep you from getting lost in the dark. Maybe that's just what I was looking to do. Are you feeling sorry for yourself, Miss Sullivan? Just this once. Yes. My father has great respect for you. That's not easily earned. He fought at Vicksburg. He edits the newspaper. And he's always daring you to measure up. If you have any advice for me, I wouldn't mind hearing it. I never really had a father, so I'm the last person to ask. But you've got to stand up to the world. That's all I know. Well, what if he's the world? Then you can just look around, James, and see how much bigger it really is. He's a man, James, that's all. So are you. Anne Evelyn. Well, come in. Come in. It is so good to see you. You have to come and see our Helen now. Miss Sullivan, I've brought you your first month's salary. You've done quite a job. You've taken a wild thing and given us back a child. I taught Helen one thing. No, don't do this, don't do that. I wanted to teach her, yes. Well, you'll have all the time you need now. Will you help me, Captain? Yes, how? Don't undo what I've done. The world is not an easy place for anyone. To give Helen her way in everything is a lie to her. You've got to stand between her and that lie. Don't give in. We're certainly going to try. I used to wonder how I would earn a living. Now the question is, can I survive it? I'll see you at supper. We glad to have you back, Missy. <laughs> what, Helen? What? Oh, yes. Keys, yes. I will keep the keys, hmm? I think we've had enough of locked doors around here. Here they are. That's right. And Jacob was left alone for the breaking of day. And he wrestled with an angel. An angel said, let me go for the day breaks. Jacob said, I will not let you go until you bless me. Amen. 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 That's a very strange grace, James. I thought it was a very fitting grace, considering the circumstances. So you're an expert now on the Bible and tobacco. Is that right, James? Pickles, Aunt F? I should say so. You know my opinion of your pickles. Well, this is the last of them, I'm afraid. I didn't put up nearly enough last summer, but this year I intend to. Reverend Tompkins stopped by the office today to complain about his weevils. I told him... Did you tell him to...? I told him to talk to you about his weevils, James. I think it's marvelous what a successful farmer you have turned out to be, James. an hour with her. Captain? Katie, we, uh, we had a little talk. 
Miss Sullivan feels that if we indulge <laughs> Helen in... But what's the child done? She's learned not to throw things on the floor and kick. Oh, but it's only a napkin. It's not as if it was something Mrs. breakable. Either give Helen to me or you keep her from kicking. Please. What do you want me to do? Let me take her from the table. <gasps> but this is her first <laughs> evening back. <laughs> Once hurt so much, Miss Annie. I have made all of Helen's favorite foods. She's testing you. She's testing you. I know. Well, she's not kicking now. This is what I was worried about. Is this what you promised me less than an hour ago? Give in to her, then. She's the one who will pay for it. Please. Pass me more of Helen's favorite foods. Take her, Miss Annie. Thank you. There, take her. No, I won't have this. I don't see that we need to send her from the table. Let me hold Helen to what she's learned, and she will go on learning. Take her out of my hands, and it all comes apart. She is the guest of honor. Bring her plate back. If she were a seen child, you would not stand for this. Well, she's not. I think some allowances are called for. Bring her plate back. <laughs> Thank you. There. Now, let's start all over. child because I ask her to see. I expect her to see. Where are you taking her? To make her refill this pitcher. You let her speak to you like that, Arthur? No, I don't. Let her go. Let her go. She's right. She's right and Kate's right. If you drive Miss Sullivan away from here, then we're lost. No. Helen is lost. Captain, please. Jimmy. Thank you. Know where we are? You recognize this place? Pump. Not here. Ah, uh, pump.
water. It has a name. Water. Yes. 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 Water. Yes. Pump. Keys? She wants the keys. <laughs> so much. <laughs> <laughs> 